Okay, so in this part, we're going to mount the Raspberry Pi into the skull of the red Inmove robot head. Now for this, I'm going to use this Raspberry Pi mount. Uh, there will be a link to it in the description. I uh, found this on Thingiverse back in 2007-8. Now, I wanted to show two Raspberry Pi 3s here. This is version 1.2 and is dated from 2015. And this one is dated from 2017. Now, there is a minor upgrade with this one. Some would call it major. The only real difference is this chip here. So this one has a has Wi-Fi on it. Um, from mem yeah, it has got Wi-Fi on it. I just can't remember which chip was in it. I think it's this one. And that uh, Wi-Fi was 2.4 gig only. This one has 2.4 and 5 gig on the Wi-Fi chip. Now, one of the other things I discovered with these is this one is more sensitive to voltage levels and draws a bit more power than this one. So you can run this one off your standard USB charger and it seems to work quite well. This one is forever complaining about low voltage when you try and do that. So I'm not as impressed with its voltage system. It could also be the higher draw with the, the bigger Wi-Fi chip. So in any case, let's pull Fred's head apart again. So this is the forehead. I've already removed the screws. And this is where I want to mount the PCA driver for the 16 channel servo driver. This one is the top of the skull and I've undone the screws to remove the back side. Now this is another Raspberry Pi mount that I found on Thingiverse. Um, very similar, the Raspberry Pi just sits on top. These mounts are a little bit taller, but it's a little bit longer overall. So I found this one, it actually works well. I can mount that in the head of the robot. Now in this case, I'm going to be using this Raspberry Pi in the robot head. We're going to have a dedicated switch mode power supply supplying about 5.1, 5.2 volts at up to three amps for this. So we're not going to have issues with power and I can use this elsewhere where I don't need that sort of Wi-Fi connectivity. Now what I've found is this will sit in on here. Turn around the right way. And then we can use a little bit of hot glue and stick these mounts on top so we can then screw in the AI board. And this is the AI board with the uh, uh, CPID M1 AI module with the K210 uh, processor. Uh, still something I've got to learn about and when I do figure out more about it I'll do another video on that one as well. But I need to make sure I have provision for it to mount because I plan to use it. So once this is, once we've got this one all set in place, mounted like, like so, I can still put the back cover on. When I take the back cover off, I have access to the USB and network ports for programming if I need to. The servo motor located on the back here will slide in nicely just in this spot here. And there is room in the forehead section for the other modules I still have to mount in. I had planned on making a, a tubular box for the power supply for that module to fit in and the PCA960, but I ran into problems once this is mounted in place, I can't gain access to these screws for the fan. So I'm going to have to reconsider the design and redo that. So that'll be in next week's video. All right, so before I mount that in there, I actually want to weld this seam up, remove these screws 
and fill in those holes with plastic weld. One of the things I've noticed is this tends to pull in so it doesn't stay in alignment when held just by screws. So we're going to uh, fix that problem up and prevent that from going out of alignment on both sides. And that will give us a, a smoother head. So this is some of the clear or transparent filament that I've been using for printing with. I think if I tried to use the white that I had in this, it would uh, show up very much. That's actually working out better than I thought it would. I did watch a video today with someone doing a PETG using a soldering iron and then they were filling it in with putty filler and sanding it back. I think that's the first time I've had the top pop off this before while welding. Alright, that puts paid to the um, 3D pen. The weld hasn't come up too badly, but it's a problem that the head has just started to come apart. Now, unfortunately, it's a little bit hot to handle. I'm not sure what's caused that. Yeah, it's gone in default. Yeah, it looks like un under pressure it's popped the uh, connection points here, filled it up with hot salt plastic and broken the connections. So this one is now toast. All right, so I'll go and find the other one and uh, Get it back online. Okay, so I've had to get my other 3D pen out. Uh, I did a review on this one some time back. I'll put a link in the description. I uh, wasn't a real fan of this one. It is slower to heat. It uh, it wouldn't go as slow as the other pen that uh, did, but. When you've got no other pens on hand, it will get you out of trouble. The other one actually, when the top came out, broke the wires on the uh, heater. And so it went into fault because it wasn't heating. So I'm just waiting for this one to heat up. It's getting close to temperature now. And then I'll have to purge it. Now the other problem with this one is it only goes up to 180 when set to 
PLA, which is what this is. But when you set it to ABS, it starts at 190 and then you can set it up to 200. Now I think I had white in it last time, so I will purge a bit out of the white. Now one thing I did discover with this is you can't change the speed while it's actually running. Okay, let's try this again. That'll actually sand up quite nicely. It's a nice clean weld. Okay, so once in place, you can see here the board is clear of the back cover. And when I take the back cover off, it's easily accessible. And this is almost flush with the edge of the hole. So that's the position we want it in. So what I'm going to do is just tack weld at the back end where it's more exposed. ability to adjust the speed while it's running would have been quite handy on that pen and unfortunately we don't have that ability with it. So now that I've got that in roughly the right spot, pull that out of the way. Okay, now that that's all welded in, That's it. Now we do lose access to the HDMI port um, and we will be powering it through the 5 volt bus here instead of through the uh, micro USB. When we take the top off we'll be able to access the micro SD card so I think this is uh, pretty good. and we can still put the lid on. There it is. So that looks pretty good. The well doesn't look too bad. I might give it a touch up with some with a file to clean that up. I think that's uh, pretty good. It holds these edges here in alignment, which they weren't doing before. Okay. This is unloading itself. I haven't noticed that behavior before, but I don't think I've ever run it that long. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll hot melt glue these stands on. Over here I have the uh, AI board and that will plug on to here. 
and I'll be able to put some screws down through and into those holes to hold it in place. So that when this robot starts walking around, which is my eventual hope, we should be right. The cable is long enough to reach into here from the camera, which is good. Uh, and we'll just be going from these pins here to the speaker, the I2S microphones, and the uh, PCA board, PCA9685 servo driver board. So that'll do us for this one you can I can mount that on top here with the Raspberry Pi mounted I'm still thinking about welding this forehead part onto the top of the face there that will eliminate a couple of little issues that I've got with it uh, not quite aligning with the face but um, I'll think more on that when I actually do the uh, controller boards so I will have to rethink this design I was planning on using forced air cooling on the power supply driving the servos because that'll have more load on it as far as load for the power supply for the Raspberry Pi goes rotate this over you can see the back of the speaker here this is a mounting plate I made for these a while back and if I mount that in here it's out of the way of everything and looks it doesn't look too bad and then I just route the power up so that'll be the next thing I do is to mount that up I may have to take the speaker box out to do that So I'll probably do that the same time I do the other power supply. To see that video when it comes out, don't forget to click subscribe. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Um, believe it or not, that does help me a lot. Uh, if you do want to help more and uh, support the work I'm doing on this, uh, I am planning on doing a walking set of legs. Uh, I have started working on documentation, some preliminary designs for walking legs. When I get to that, it is going to cost me a little bit more. So any support I can get would be greatly appreciated. So run on over to Patreon and have a look over there. Patreon supporters do get earlier access to these videos as well. And we'll see you on the next video.